How to make natto from a wild plant by Natto King. That's something I'm going to talk about today, so stick around. Hi, my name is Sachiak Takamiya, the Natto King. I am the author of the Ikigai Diet and Ikigai Biohacking. Okay, so as a Natto King, I've been sharing with you how to make different Natto dishes, right? But each time, I've been telling you that you can use a packaged natto like this to make natto dishes. However, the best way is to use your own natto, right? But you need to be able to make your own natto. So today, I'm sharing with you how to make your own natto the natural way. Yes. Now, there are some videos sharing with you how to make your own natto, but most of them are using the regular natto kin, the regular natto bacteria to make one, which the most common way is to use from a packaged natto. So you just take a few, you know, natto beans from a packaged natto because that contains natto bacteria and then you mix them with the soybeans to ferment natto yeah which is okay or the alternative way is you can buy the natto bacteria right but what i recommend is use a local natto bacteria because the local bacteria is the most suitable to your body your physical makeups Right? Uh, okay, so how to find a local natto kin, natto bacteria, is to find any kind of wild plant. Yeah? The most common way in Japan is to use a rice straw. You know, rice straw, because rice straw contains natto jam. And in the same way, uh, in the West, you can use a wheat straw too. Uh, but anything is okay. Like, for example, you can even use uh, like a mint yeah, in your garden. So any kind of wild plant contain natto kin, yeah? And then this natto kin is a local. Yeah, in fact, it's come from my garden, so it's very close to, uh, it's like in my house, really, basically. So it's the most uh, local thing you can get, yeah. Um, so today I will show you how to make natto the natural way. Okay, for things you need to uh, make natto, first you need a pressure cooker like this, yeah? And then inside the pressure cooker, you need this kind of strainer, yeah? To put the soybeans on. And then underneath you need this, uh, I don't know what it called, maybe it's a, another strainer, yeah? This sort of thing, to put at the bottom of the cooker and then when you pour the water you pour the water up to this level yeah and then it gives the steam yeah and then you put the strainer on top and then put the soybeans and then you basically pressure steam the soybeans right so you need a pressure cooker and then you also need a yogurt maker yeah um, now there is a traditional more natural way of making natto but the key is to keep the soybeans uh, with a 45 degrees centigrade for about 24 hours yeah and sometime to keep uh, that, that with, with the temperature of 45 degrees for 24 hours is quite difficult yeah the consistency is the key but using this kind of tool, uh, you, you, you can keep that temperature throughout the 48 hours and I mean the 24 hours. So it is very convenient. Yeah. And, then, and inside it has this container and then you put soybeans in this container. And then also inside there is a cloth. Yeah. And you need this kind of cloth to keep the moisture uh, during uh, your fermentation. Right. And then you need some filtered water, yeah? And then, of course, you need the soybeans, the organic uh, soybeans. 
Uh, I usually get this organic soybeans from a local organic farmer. Yeah, and then some wild plants. It could be rice straw or wheat straw. Uh, in my case, I picked these mint from my garden. So first process of making natto is to uh, soak your soybeans and it takes about 24 hours. So I'll just show you the first process today. So with some soybeans like this and then put it That's about 380 grams. Yeah. That's about 200 grams. So, um, 380 and 200 is about 580 grams. I don't usually measure it, but I just, yeah, use about that much. I mean, you know, the amount is not important. I mean, how much ever you want, uh, you can make. Okay, and then I need to wash the beans first. All right, so I just wash the beans and then I just put water, filtered water, you need to pour three times as much water as the soybeans. Again, you know, I, I don't usually measure it, you know, just about this much. Yeah, right. And then you basically you put the lid on and leave it for about 24 hours. Now, the time for soaking, uh, roughly about 24 hours, but depending on the season, yeah? Uh, but uh, in the summertime, maybe even shorter time, maybe 12 to 15 hours is enough. But in the wintertime, you need about 24 hours. And But in the summertime, you need to change water because the water uh, goes bad after like 12 hours or so. So you need to change the water like uh, after about 12 hours, yeah? And then, uh, yeah, you can soak the beans for 24 hours. But you probably don't need 24, maybe 15, yeah, 12, as I said, 12 to 15 hours is probably fine, right? Um, so that is the first process and then I need to wait for 24 hours to do the actual pressure steaming. So it is about after 12 hours and then the water is still okay but you see there's some kind of white like a farm kind of thing white foam kind of things on the water yeah and then uh, that, that increases if we I uh, keep using the same water, so I need to change the water now and yeah, and then soak the beans with the fresh water for the next 12 hours. So I pour the, I take the water out. Now, Pouring the new water. Like that. Okay, it is about 22 hours after I started soaking the soybeans. Yeah, and then last night I changed water and yet already a lot of white forms. Yeah, right. So probably I don't need 22 hours, maybe like 20 hours is enough. Okay, so I'm gonna take the water out. So being there like this. Thank you. 
And then I put one of those things in the pressure cooker. Then I pour water, the filtered water again, up to the same level as this, you know, strainer type of thing. Then I put this kind of strainer on top. And then just put the soybeans. Like this. Then I put the lid on. Right. Yeah, then I put the pressure cooker on the stove and turn the gas on. And I make sure that you have the pressure on high pressure. So there's a high pressure and low pressure and you want to use a high pressure. Yeah, and then you can put the gas on high flame. And then you wait until the pressure comes on. While you're waiting, uh, you want to get some wild plant. Yeah, so I've got a lot of mint in my garden, as you can see. So I'm gonna pick some mint here. I think those are good. I think four mint will do, yeah. So now the pressure is coming on, yeah. So you see the red thing? When the red thing comes up, that means the pressure is on. Then you want to turn the gas to the low frame, yeah. And then you want to set a timer for 30 minutes. Yeah, so you set the timer for 30 minutes and then uh, you yeah, leave the pressure cooker like that to let it steam pressure, let it a uh, pressure steam. Okay, so I'll wash these mint. And then I take all the leaves off. Yeah, uh, because if you put the leaves on, uh, they kind of scattered in the yogurt maker, you know, with uh, like soybeans and then, uh, yeah, they, they will just go everywhere. Plus the, uh, when the soybeans are fermented, yeah, the color becomes half green, yeah? So you want to avoid that. So you just take all the leaves off, just like this, yeah? Um, so just take all leaves off like that. So like 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 these, yeah. Like uh, to have the stalks, yeah. You just want to have minto stalks. All right. The next step is you want to boil water, yeah. To boil the minto to boil minto stalks.
Okay, now the water is boiled. Yeah, so with a 100 degrees centigrade and 212 Fahrenheit. Yeah, it's the boiling water. And then you put the mint stalks there. Okay, so for about one minute. Yeah, right. And then this way you can get rid of most germs. Yeah, because there are some other germs than Bacillus subtilis. So you want to separate Bacillus subtilis with other germs. Yeah, and then, so the thing about Bacillus subtilis, you know, not talking, is so powerful that it doesn't die even uh, you are boiling it with 100 degrees centigrade water. Yeah? So, great thing about not talking is that it doesn't die even when it is boiled, yeah? But all other germs die, so this way you can separate the not talking uh, from other germs and you just have the not talking left on the stove. Yeah, so after about one minute, you can take the minto stalks out and put them on a plate like this. And you want to cleanse other things too, like uh, this cotton cloth that I use to ferment soybeans. I can put it in the boiling water for about one minute too. Um, I don't need to do it now because I've been using this cotton cross to make natto so many times or natto king is already on the cross and because natto king is more powerful than any other bacteria uh, it kind of wins in the competition so you don't need to worry too much about other bacteria uh, interfering in the process. But when you make natto for the first time, you want to cleanse every item you use during your fermentation. You want to cleanse uh, any item that you use during your fermentation. Uh, for example, even this container. Yeah? So you kind of want to Put the container in the boiling water and cleanse it. Okay, I think now the pressure went down and I think the beans are ready. So I open the lid. I open the lid of the pressure cooker. So I just uh, pick one soybean to see if it is soft enough. If you can squash it with your thumb and index finger like this, that means it's very hot. Uh, it is ready to be fermented. If it's not soft enough, you may have to pressure steam it a little longer. Yeah, but and now it is ready, right? So, what I do is use one of those ladle to put the beans into this container.
yeah. So I just filled up the container. But I still got a lot of beans left, but it doesn't matter because you can eat yeah, them as soybeans. You know, there are so many dishes you can make with regular uh, steamed soybeans. In fact, steamed soybeans are very good for you. Maybe they're not as good as natto, but they're still good. And then you put these mint stalks into the natto, I mean into the soybeans. Maybe this one is a bit too long. I should have cut it into half. But the thing is, I haven't done this uh, in a while because usually I don't use any wild plant to ferment soybeans. I just don't put anything because soybeans itself contain some Bacillus subtilis. But uh, in my case, this container yeah, contains Bacillus subtilis, so I don't need to put anything in that sense. Um, yeah, so because of that, when you buy a yogurt maker, you want to use it only for making natto. You want to specialize it for natto making and you cannot use for making yogurt or anything else. And if you want to make yogurt as well, you have to buy two yogurt makers, one for making yogurt one for making natto because natto germ will stay in the container and it is so powerful that uh, it kind of wins in the competition against anything else. Yeah, I should have really cut them into half, yeah? So when you make it, make sure you cut the stalks into half before uh, putting them in the boiling water. Now I can't really touch it, yeah? But it doesn't matter. And then, okay, you put that cross on top. Yeah? And then you want to leave some space uh, for the oxygen to come in. So you do not want to cover it completely. Yeah, I don't know if you've read my blog post called How to Make Natto from a Rice Straw, uh, from a Rice Straw Stick. Uh, I used a cling film, yeah? And in that case, I made a hole, yeah, in the cling film uh, for the oxygen to come in. But you cannot make hole, you cannot make holes with this cotton cloth. Therefore, you sort of leave some space at the edge of the container yeah for the oxygen to come in yeah so just like that and then you put the lid on and then you put it in the yogurt maker but you want to make sure that the temperature is 45 degrees centigrade which is 113 fahrenheit then you cover the yogurt maker with a paper towel and then put the lid on. And you, you know, open the lid a little bit so that the oxygen can come in. So the timer says 24 hours, yeah? You want to uh, ferment it for 24 hours. So 24 hours and then temperature is 45 degrees. You Press the start button like that. So now the yogurt maker is on. So it ferments the soybeans for 24 hours with a temperature of 45 degrees centigrade, 113 Fahrenheit. Yeah, and then you all, all you need to do is just wait for another 24 hours. Next day, the 24 hours later. Yeah, the fermentation is done. So I'll check the inside. So we open it. 
and then open the lid. Look at that. Yes. Yeah, so that's how it is. And you can just take these minto stalks out. Right. So you take the you take all the stalks out and then you mix them. See? Yes, it is fermented. Yeah? Look at this uh, stickiness. Yeah? This sliminess. That is natto. Yeah. So I succeeded. Yeah? In making natto, turning regular soybeans to fermented soybeans. Right. And so I told you that a lot of people usually put this in the fridge and keep another 24 hours in the fridge. But you don't need to do it. I mean, you can kind of eat it uh, at this point now. But I still keep it in the fridge anyway because you want to keep the natto in the fridge. Yeah, but I might, you know, like um, eat natto now and then uh, I'll keep eating natto uh, for the next few days and usually I keep the container in the refrigerator. Okay, so now I have the natto so I'll just uh, try it. I'll put some soy sauce then mix them. Mm, look at that. Looks really good. And I'll try it. Mmm. This is very good. Alright, so that's there. Yeah, that's how to make natto from a wild plant. Right. Okay, so the the I'll I'll go through the process one more time. Okay. First you soak soybeans for 24 hours. I mean, it, depending on the season, between the 12 to 24 hours, but make sure that beans become soft enough, right? And then you pressure steam the soybeans, yeah? And for about 30 minutes, yeah? Um, but first you uh, wait until the pressure comes on, which takes about 15 minutes, and then when you pressure steam the beans with raw frame, yeah, for 30 minutes, you turn the gas off, then you leave the pressure, you leave the lid on for another 15 minutes, yeah. So that means it takes one hour to pressure steam the soybeans. But that is much faster compared to steaming soybeans in a regular way. It takes three like it takes over three hours so using pressure cooker is much faster right and then the final process is to ferment the soybeans so using yogurt maker with a 45 degree centigrade 113 fahrenheit yeah uh, for 24 hours you ferment the soybeans and then uh, it becomes natto yeah, as I said before, there is more traditional way of making one, but I think using yogurt maker is very convenient, it is very practical, and if you want to make natto every week, yeah, because you want to basically eat natto every day, right? And then use that method, because it works all the time. I have been making natto every single week for the past over five years or so. Right, so that means I've made natto so many times, okay? Now, adherence is very important, yeah? Because you want to produce natto to be able to eat it. If you fail each time when you make natto, then, yeah, eventually you kind of give up because a lot of people often try making natto and they fail. 
like you know once twice three times and they usually they give up oh it's too difficult to make one so find a kind of easy enough way but still natural way and this way your success rate is much higher yeah i never failed i mean i have never failed making natto in the last five years using this method but before that i was using more traditional approach and i failed many times right okay so i hope you make your own natto and start eating natto every day right all right thank you for watching again my name is hachiak takamiya i am the author of the ikigai diet and ikigai biohacking right okay so natto isn't everything although it is one of the best superfood out there yeah you want to eat with many other ingredients in fact by eating natto with other fiber rich ingredient it becomes even more powerful it has a synergetic effect yeah i made a video called uh, how to make a fiber rich natto salad to boost your gut health by natto king so that is one example of how you can eat natto with other ingredients yeah so to know more about what to eat and how to eat what kind of ingredients what kind of you know fiber rich ingredient you can use and everything please read the ikigai diet it contains a detailed information about what you can eat and how you can eat to improve your health and longevity yeah and also for other elements such as intermittent fasting exercises and mindset spirituality and so on please read ikigai biohacking right okay so if you like this video please give me your thumb up and subscribe to my youtube channel please hit that subscribe button thank you all right so i'll see you in the next video live with your ikigai